All right, good afternoon. This is David Broad, president of the Central Indiana AFL-CIO. I'm here with Matt Davis, uh, also a member of the Central Indiana AFL-CIO, our community outreach person. Uh, he has been on the streets. Uh, uh, and what we want to do is, is have a conversation about what's taking place here in Indiana and in Indianapolis. Uh, also address what can we do for change? Uh, because once uh, the protest is over, once the march is over, uh, peaceful or unpeaceful, uh, once it's over, uh, what progress have we made? Uh, what changes have we made? What changes can we see being made? So with that being said, uh, I'd like uh, Matt to introduce himself, some of the things that he's doing and that he's a part of. And uh, you got the floor, Matt. Thank you, Brian. Um, thank you, David. Uh, it's an honor to be able to speak uh, with labor leaders and just speak to people about what's happening in the broader labor movement. There's a lot of intersections between um, what's happening in criminal justice and in our communities um, and what's happening in our workplace. Uh, <clears throat> you have several crises happening at the same time. You have a pandemic that's showing so much about public health and uh, um, you know COVID safe workplaces and how do we protect workers and their safety, and then also how do we protect um, our our residents and our just uh, black and brown and marginalized communities, which make up so much of the labor body and the rank and file, you know, and so all these things are just colliding together. And so I'm just glad to be here and be in this space and uh, this dialogue with you and so many others across the state in solidarity with those who are on the front line, trying to do direct action, civil disobedience, and then also those who are doing political action at the table to uh, make long-term changes. Um, so yeah, my name is Matt and I'm uh, with Unite Here Local 23 in regards to labor and I'm honored to uh, serve on the Community Engagement Committee with the Central Indiana uh, AFL-CIO Council. Thank you, my brother. If you could go into uh, what's been going on this last week, and first of all and foremost, uh, we want to send a heartfelt condolence to the Floyd family and to all the other families who we know without a shadow of a doubt, without a shadow of a doubt, that if things were different, they would still be here. So my heart, and it's really hard for me uh, to hold it together most times because as a labor leader, uh, you're always pushing for change for people for a better quality of life but when you run into people who don't even recognize you in the sense that you're something different than who you are there's no way for you to have the same blood running through your veins as everyone else in this country, in this world, and to wake up every morning and, and wonder if you're going to get back home. Uh, I'm going to tell you, brother, I ain't cried so much in my life. As a Marine Corps veteran, serve this country, fight for this country, believe that this country can be the best in the world, but to have to look my daughter in her eyes and she's crying and she's worried about her dad not coming home, fear. Fear, just sheer fear and pain. 
And I give you a real quick example. We was out, uh, you know, uh, working the polls yesterday, and uh, uh, Mitch was out there, and Coda knows him from the sheriff department. And she was sitting in the truck, and me and Mitch was talking, and and uh, uh, he was, you know, introducing himself, you know, to people. So we were just talking, and she has my phone, and she sees. Uh, I can't breathe, you know, because it's everywhere. And she sees us again, and, and she's bawling in the car. And she gets out, and uh, she's just like, I don't understand why people just could, how could somebody take another person's life just because they don't look like them? And she's bawling, and she's like, I don't understand why the police would do that. And I'm explaining, trying to how, even though it's not all police officers, because we have tolerated it for so long, it's normal. It's normal to hear on the news about a black man losing his life at the hands of law enforcement, that his, crime or non-crime or whatever was all done right then. He never got a chance to stand before his peers and say, I'm not guilty of what, what happened. I'm executed on site. And she's bawling and she walks up to Mitch and mind you, this line is long, people coming. She's crying and he's like, what's wrong? And she's like, I, I, don't, I don't understand why people, why would he hurt? He's supposed to protect us. And you could see Mitch is just devastated. You know what I'm saying? And he, he kind of, you know, he gets caught and he's like, Coda, he said, you know me? And she like, he said, and you know, I would protect you, right? And she said, and she said, and you know, I would never do anything like that. And she hugs him. And man, I'm, I'm, just, I'm crying, bro, because we're not, we're not, we, we're not making progress. So I want you to tell me some things that you think could help us make the progress because I've lived long enough that I'm not going to allow my daughter to grow up and be afraid if her daddy's coming home. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going, we, we not, we, right. we have to make these decisions and changes now. So just give me uh, some ideas, some things that you may think, you know, that we can do here in labor, because I know as a black man, I, I, I don't have no problem talking to anybody. Uh, my results have always been the same. I'll hold you accountable. So all these conversations are gonna have to come with something better than the same rhetoric we, we keep hearing. Yeah. You know, so what what, what, what you feel about it? So the first thing I want to start off with is, like you said, David, this, this is something that hits, hits home for everybody. Um, there are global protests happening right now, global over George Floyd. This is uh, an uprising, and I mean that in the most peaceful way, period. This feels like a moment where we are trying to change an entire institution. I feel like sometimes when we uh, take on social issues or when we fight for social justice, especially in labor, when we fight for economic justice, sometimes it feel like, okay, we just fighting a good fight, but are we gonna win? And I feel like, are we gonna change the actual system? And what I feel so inspired about in this moment is that you have young people and, and people across all generations um, who are ready, of course, across all races, but across generations, right? Who are ready to change police as an institution, and that is hopeful. That is hopeful. And so in order to do that though, 
we need systemic demands, you know, and there are several criminal justice advocates across the country, also um, abolitionists across the country who have put out several different demands. Here locally, there's two main groups who have really clear demands uh, for the mayor's office and for the department. The first is uh, Black Lives Matter Indy, and they have been talking about the Drajan Reed case. Now for a month now, now for a month now, it's been a little murky for people. You haven't had the video, you haven't had uh, a lot of the evidence. There's been two special investigations that have been started. One is an administrative one, and one is more about uh, operations and just checking in with two different departments, investigating two different departments independently to get to the truth. That's what's been a foot mm -hmm. for a month with Dre John. A lot of people have been murky because of who he is and how they want to paint him. There's been a lot of um, a lot of smear of that case. But today there was just a press conference that let him know that he never brandished a weapon, he never pulled out a weapon, and he never shot a weapon. He never brandished a weapon. He never pulled out a weapon. He never pointed a weapon. And he sure as hell did not shoot anyone. Or there was no return, like that was not a return fire situation. So that means that that officer, not only did he violate orders from the chief of police who told him to call, to stand down from the pursuit, right? He went ahead and used way too much deadly force with no forcible felony um, in, 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 in action, right? That's what you use deadly force for if your officer is something like that. So it's obvious that this is a horrible situation. We all knew that it was. The demands for Drejan in his case are name the officer. That's just a basic thing. You see these situations in cities all across the Midwest right now. At least you know the officer. Right. Charge fire the officer is the second. Charge the officer with something. Right. Convict the officer on some level. Some people are calling for a murder. Indy Ten has some demands on their uh, social media. I can give you the social media so you can uh, link to that before the end of this call. Um, and uh, the use of force policy to be strengthened uh, and and rewritten. Um, so that's one of the most immediate ones, especially today, that's a really, really volatile thing today because the press conference was today that really revealed all that. They have the library video. So the other thing is Faith in Indiana. Faith in Indiana is a faith-based coalition. They have a full congressional network of people fighting for social justice on a regular basis. Criminal justice is one of their main uh, points and main issue campaigns that they do across the state. I want to read off some of their demands. I've been doing a lot of direct action. My voice is a little hoarse, that might, <laughs> might, you might notice that, but uh, it's because I've been out there with these young people who are um, really looking for change and want to harness that energy into something. So you have the Zhejiang specific things, and then you also have these system uh, and systemic uh, demands of the department. And I'll read these off briefly and uh, we can move to the next thing. So strengthen the use of force policy, same, same as Black Lives Matter. Enact a progressive discipline policy. Again, he violated the orders of his chief. Uh, de-escalation and procedural justice training. There needs to be mandatory department-wide de-escalation training. The police have a horrible time with de-escalating situations. We see this from the peaceful civil disobedience that we see throughout this weekend. And the way that they es escalate situations is absolutely deplorable. Uh, implement group violence intervention recommendations immediately. These are ways that we can start to solve our own problems, which we also usually have to do ourselves anyway. Um, respond, this one's really important, respond to mental health crises with intervention, uh, not incarceration. So we need to quit locking up people who are sick, who have mental illness, who have mental health problems or issues, which are different than being mentally ill, right? Because okay. sometimes just being in poverty can make you mentally ill. You know what I mean? Suffering from all these social determinants can affect your mental health. So quit locking people up. Uh, move to unfair, uh, this is the sixth one, uh, remove unfair protections for officers and law enforcement contracts. I just want to speak on that really quick about the fraternal order of policing, its importance to the labor conversation. A lot of people have been chanting 
um, a lot of strong things against the FOP, um, which are not unwarranted at all. Rick Schneider's commentary over the past month from Jean Reed to three people being killed in eight hours during police action killings um, that happened in eight. So Jean got killed before eight hours was up after that. Two more people got killed by police. So it was three and eight. And if we remember in Cincinnati in, in early 2000s, two people got killed in 24 hours in the whole city, right? So the fact that Indianapolis is still even able to hold it together, given his commentary, is amazing. So that contract being rewritten, being redone the right way, is important because we need all labor voices to be held accountable in this moment. All labor voices. You have, it's an honor to be on this call with an Ask Me leader during a time of such civil rights activity. Right, think about the weight of that. I'm talking to a, a Ask Me leader right now, and Ask Me's legacy of civil civil rights, social justice, economic justice. Where is the FOP and that legacy of labor playing a role in progress? We need that right now. So let's re let's rewrite that contract to reflect that. And then the last one is uh, require independent investigations of all police violence. This is what we're seeing right now, where Jajan is able the case where uh, Jajan Reed is able to be sussed out because we have real investigation happening. So those are the systemic demands of the entire department and of the FOP. And um, those are very important for everybody to know in labor. Uh, Faith in Indiana is also an organization that's supporting Unite Here, SEIU, other industrial worker movements, and also the broader uh, AFL-CIO uh, uh, across the state with their Indiana Cares Coalition for um, their COVID response. So they are part and parcel with this labor struggle that we have been in for years, decades. Uh, and um, that's how we're gonna move forward is those systemic demands. I appreciate that. Uh, in closing, uh, I'm just gonna tell you, we don't need no more training because it's only happening to one group of people. So we don't, we don't, we don't, need, we don't need law enforcement to have no more diversity training. Oh, no, no not, not diversity. You know, uh, any de-escalation in it, you know why? Yeah. It's the way they handle black people, brown people minorities in general. If you looked at what happened in Kentucky, and there's a picture of protesters, the police, and then there's a line of white women standing in between the protesters and the police. Did nobody get hit? Exactly. With no rubber bullets shot with no gas, it never escalated. Never. Nobody was arrested. So you, you don't need to be trained. You need to be held accountable. Oh yeah. So it's accountability that we need to seek from the mayor's office, from the FOP, uh, from officers who come to the community and say, if you see something, say something. So I employ all my police officers out there and my final little spiel uh, before I get off here. Uh, I've heard uh, this conversation always get turned to, well, black people killing black people at a and black people are being locked up and they're going to jail when they kill yeah, another right. yeah. black yeah. person. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. I, I want to make it clear to all my law enforcement officers. No one's mad at white people. No one's mad at law enforcement. What people are upset with is there is no accountability for when things 
happen in the community that don't happen anywhere else except for in minority communities. So what we have to do is take that money that you were going to use to tell somebody what they already know not to do mm -hmm. and put it somewhere else. Because all you have to do is start holding people accountable. If what those officers did, we did. If I put my knee on someone's neck, and killed him while you and another guy held him down, we all going to jail. Everybody. So this sense of justice has to be justice for all, accountability for all. And if you're going to be a public servant, whether law enforcement, city council, state, right. federal, whatever, we're all accountable for this. This don't just hurt the Floyd family. It hurts us all. Mm -hmm. Because there's someone watching it feeling like it's okay. So we didn't talk about it. We've been, man, we didn't get all the talking we need to do. Mm -hmm. So that movement of young people, that movement of people that want to see it change, have to start putting themselves in positions to run for a position. No different than what the labor movement does. Yep. That's why we're at the state house. That's why we're at the city council meetings. That's why we're in DC. Because when they start making laws that are going to affect the people that we represent, the people that we voted for, we go to and tell them, this is not working. And if they don't do and work towards the cause, what do you do? You try to find you somebody that's going to work for your cause. Yep. Now, I believe the American people as a whole, come on, man. They, they ain't cool with this. I don't care how media try to whatever and, and everybody. Human beings aren't cool with seeing people murder and people not being held accountable for. It. So we're going to quit the spans and we're going to quit playing. Get ready to register everyone to vote. Yep. Yesterday. And change happens through the ballot box and through you holding people accountable. Yes, sir. I wanted to just say real quick, uh, you know, there's a lot of groups, especially those two groups that I mentioned, who have been doing a lot of good civil disobedience over the past week and the past month. And, um, you know, yesterday, uh, but then over these past four days, just the energy, right? And the, the, especially the past five days, it's just been young people out there like, look, we're done. We're just out here, like no organization, no nothing. So I just been kind of popping up, doing some, some giving it some direction, reading off some demands, giving a little guidance there and uh, yesterday you know because it was uh the primary we uh we had some chance about you know if, uh, if 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 we don't get it vote them out you know what i mean like getting young people to do that we went in front of city council right the city county building and we went to where everybody was standing in line and they started doing that chant with us that's power those young people doing that chant alone marching to the city county building alone uh, that on top of that and then having the people in line doing that chant too, that's power. Then that is what's gonna make them vote in November. And that might get, uh, that energy might get yeah. Trump out of it. We need it. 
So, my brother, we're going to get off here. I uh, appreciate you. Appreciate you. Of course, it won't be the last time we talk. I'm proud of you and all the work that you're doing, taking care of the community, being involved in the community. We've been so involved in the misjustices uh, at the hands of law enforcement, all the other work that you've done with uh, feeding people and getting the young kids fed and working with the union to get meals out and 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 mask and, and hand sanitizer to people. Uh, I appreciate you, young man. Uh, stay stay encouraged. Keep up the fight, and uh, we're gonna win in the end. You know it. All right. Appreciate you. Have a good one, my brother.